Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can light interior scenes in Unity Engine. We are going to be using the universal render pipeline for this. And UARP is a lot better compared to the standard render pipeline when it comes to the graphics. Lighting is a complicated subject. It is something that takes a lot of time. And there is no tutorial on earth that would teach you how to light a scene in just 10 minutes. In this video, I wanted to give you my honest thought process when it comes to making lights work in my game. So I highly recommend starting your project with the 3D URP core template because if you use the template, you're going to get a folder called settings and it's going to contain a lot of templates for your render pipeline assets. Oh, and by the way, all of these represent different quality settings. So if you go to edit project settings quality, you can see that there are three levels of quality created. If you go to performance, this will use a different pipeline asset. If you use high fidelity, it's going to use a better rendering pipeline asset. All right, with better settings. If you have already started your project with the normal rendering pipeline, don't worry, we'll talk about it in just a little bit. For this tutorial, we're going to be using interior house assets by Unity Technologies. Link will be in the description. I have already set up a very basic scene here with the prefabs available from this package. This is a simple living room. And in the game, we have set up the camera so that I have a pretty decent shot. Outside the window, we have a very simple background image, which is just an image that I found from pexels.com. Link will also be in the description. And I've attached it to a plane. And I have a single game object called environment, which consists of all of my mesh and everything else. This also has a ceiling, which is like an inverted plane. All right. For those of you who have already started their project with the standard render pipeline, this is how you convert your existing project to use Universal Render Pipeline. First, we need to install URP. To do that, we go to Window, Package Manager, and you go to Packages and select Unity Registry. And then you scroll down and find Universal RP, and then hit Install. And Unity will start installing this package. Oh, I'm feeling sleepy. And now if you close out of this, you can see that there is no change here. This is because we need to explicitly tell Unity that we need to use Universal Render Pipeline. Before we do that, we're going to right click, create a folder for the lighting, and we're going to create a rendering URP asset. And we're going to choose with Universal Renderer. For 2D games, you use 2D Renderer. And we're going to name it URP Asset or something like that. And then we go to Edit, Project Settings, and then we go to quality and here we can choose a render pipeline asset. We're going to click on this dot here and then select our URP asset. And let's hit continue. And you can see that our entire scene has turned pink, which is a good sign because it means that everything is working. This is because if you click on a mesh and then if you go to the material of that mesh, this is still using the standard shader. Now we need to use the URP shaders for it to work. How do we do that? So if your project contains a lot of materials, the easiest way to do it would be to go to the root assets folder and then click on this icon here, which is called search by type. And then you select materials. So this is going to show all of your materials in your assets folder and then plus control and A to select all and then go to edit rendering materials, convert selected built in materials to URP. If you click on it, it will show us a material upgrader window. Now it is telling us to have a project backup before we proceed with this. So if you're working on a commercial game or something, make sure to just back up your project just in case things doesn't work out. If we hit proceed, this is going to work. And this is going to change all of our materials to use the universal render pipeline shaders. If one of these shaders is not supported or if it is like a custom one or a complex legacy shader, Unity will not change them into URP. It will show you a log error in this console. Now, on to the scene here. We are going to get rid of this directional light. And we have a very simple scene here. The first thing we need is a lighting settings asset. So we go to the settings folder. We right click, create lighting settings. We're going to call it global lighting. And we need to assign this lighting settings to the scene. So we go to window, rendering, lighting. Let's dock this window over here and then let's drag and drop this lighting settings here. The actual lighting of the scene starts at this timestamp, but I highly recommend not skipping the next couple of minutes 
these are things that i've learned from my own personal experience making terrible terrible indoor games and i really think it would be useful so there are actually a lot of things to think about when it comes to lighting and indoor scene i want you to ask yourself two important questions right now the first question that i want you to ask yourself is will there be light coming from the outside in this case we have a window and it's open and it's daylight therefore it makes sense for light to come in that's not always the case in most games in sci-fi games when you're in spaceships or something you probably won't have any windows or if you're playing a horror game you may want total darkness and it may be night time so it also does not realistically make sense to have light coming from the outside so i want you to have a think about it and choose whether or not we need to use directional lights if you don't need any lighting you go to environment and then change the environment lighting from skybox to gradient or color and then choose the ambient color to be completely black this is going to eliminate all lighting from our game and you can see that everything is kind of like black all right in this example we are going to have light coming from the exterior the second thing that i want you to think about is whether or not lights are involved in a particular mechanic in this game for example in horror games you may have a ghost and whenever the ghost appears you may want the lights to blink constantly in that cases baking your lights is not the way to go you need to use real time lights and it's not really that hard when you create a light for example in this case we created a point light in the inspector we're going to just choose real time all right it's going to be on by default so you don't have to worry about baking your lights or anything real time is going to actually save you in when it comes to memory but the trade off is that it's going to take a toll on your cpu so just keep that in mind and use it wisely another example of mechanics would be day and night cycles so in that case you'll use real time lights as well so that all of the shadows and everything gets updated automatically when you're baking your lights and stuff it's permanent it's always going to be there all right so in this case we are going to bake our lights it does have a little bit of memory usage but it will significantly improve your performance so i think it's great to have your lights baked so let's start lighting the scene so let's go to our lighting settings and we are not going to have any real time global illumination so let's just leave it at that for the lighting mode you can use either subtractive or shadow mask subtractive is a lot more optimized so you could technically use subtractive if you want to shadow mask gives more realistic results so just for the purposes of this tutorial i'm going to use shadow mask subtractive is the way to go if you want better performance all right it would still give similar results the light mapper we're going to set it to progressive gpu if you have a gpu we're going to leave progressive updates and important sampling turned on we're going to leave almost all of these at the defaults and the most important bit here is the light map resolution currently it is set to 40 texels per unit this is going to be the resolution of light maps and it's not in pixels it's in texels if you're making an indoor scene i highly recommend selecting a value between 30 and 100 the player is going to look at things a lot more closely therefore it is worth it to have very high resolution if you are going up to a 100 the light map size would be around a gigabyte or something you should use a lower value like 20 or 30 if you have a lot of interior to work with if your entire game is just within these confines or maybe inside this house then you could go up to 100 because you have very limited space and the entire game will be taking place inside the scene so taking your time to bake a much better light map is going to be worth it for this example i'm going to leave it at 30 and let's see what happens for the padding you are going to set it to 2 because this is only a single room if you are going to have rooms side by side i recommend increasing this value to like 4 or something this avoids bleeding of light from one room to another or bleeding of light between adjacent uv islands but let's just leave it to two is going to work all right for this tutorial if you're facing any light bleeding or something consider increasing this light map padding and try to rebake again the light map size let's leave it at 2024 the quality is going to be high quality we need to enable ambient occlusion 
because this is how we enable ambient occlusion in URP. There is no post processing effect specifically for ambient occlusion. And let's leave it at default. And the final thing is going to be light map parameters. Let's set it to default high resolution. And there we go. If we go to the game, you won't see any changes, but we're going to change the skybox. All right. So let's experiment. We're going to create a material for the skybox. Let's call this skybox. I'm going to drag it into my assets folder and then I'm going to go to the shader and choose skybox procedural. All right. For the sky tint, I'm going to choose the color from my background. And for the ground, I'm going to choose this color. Let's go back to lighting and then select this skybox. And you can sort of see what I'm trying to achieve here. Let's go back to the material and I'm actually going to just play around with these values to get a much smoother result. All right. And for reflections, we're going to increase bounces to three. And let's see, because we are having light from the outside, let's create a light, directional light. And I'm going to rotate it so that it faces this direction. So we get a cool shadow from the window here. Right now, there is no shadow because we need to go to inspector, change shadow type to soft shadows. And now you can see the shadow exists. And you can see that the ceiling does not work properly in the game view and you're getting light from the top to fix that you can select the ceiling and then go to mesh renderer lighting from cast shadows you can change this to two-sided and this is now gonna be proper all right let's go back and actually let me increase the intensity to maybe 2.5 and then change the color to maybe yeah yeah a little bit of yellow cool right and the mode is going to be baked Next, let's create an area light. And this is really cool when you have windows and stuff. Area light is only going to be baked. So I'm going to place it over the window here, kind of like this. Maybe I'll increase the intensity to maybe three, maybe two or something. And I'll duplicate it, leave it here. Cool. So we have three area lights. This is experiment phase. I haven't rehearsed this tutorial. So I'm just playing around and having fun. Let's also add lights for this lamp here. So you can add light to the lamp prefab, which is probably the best way to go. So let's open the lamp prefab. Let's add a light point light. Let's move it up. Right now you can see that this is too much. Let's reduce the intensity to 0.21. And let me just move the light down a little bit. Let's set the mode to bake. And let's change the color to maybe something like orange, something like this. I don't know how well this is going to look, but I think everything is going to work just fine. Now, before we actually bake our lights, there's a couple of things that we need to do. We need to select our environment. That is the entire mesh. Better, we need to select the objects that do not move in our scene. And we need to mark them as static. And you need to change the children as well. And then before we bake our lights, let's go to our scene here and temporarily set the light map resolution to one and then choose the light map size to be something like 128 and hit generate lighting. This finished my baking in just a couple of seconds. The lighting is terrible. So if there are any errors, you don't have to wait a lot of time to fix this. So let's set this back to 30 and the light map resolution back to 1024 save the scene and hit generate lighting so this looks eh, i'm not really impressed by this so let's make some changes you can see that the ambient occlusion is too much so there's a lot of black to the edges so let's fix that by actually reducing the indirect contribution to maybe 0.5 maybe the max distance to 0.5 if we want to reduce the ambient occlusion strength here the way we do that is by going to our settings and then selecting our renderer data asset. So this one here, and you can see there is an option here. It's probably fold out like this called screen space ambient occlusion. And we can just reduce the intensity. So I'm going to reduce it to 0.15 and you can see the result that it's, it's a lot better. It's a lot clean and uh, maybe I'll set it to 0.2 and maybe even reduce the radius a little bit. All right, everything else is fine. What else can we do? Probably increase the albedo boost to something like 
one point maybe two maybe the indirect intensity can also be changed to three and you can see it's a lot better i'm going to reduce the max distance to point one reduce the indirect contribution and i am going to increase the light map size let's go to these area lights and let me increase the intensity to maybe 9.2 even this directional light let me increase this to 4 and let's see what happens and you can see that this is too much the reason why i'm not giving you a direct solution is because a direct solution does not exist when you're making a game in real time you are going to have to play around with these values make terrible decisions and then make changes accordingly so let's reduce this back to maybe two uh, indirect multiplier let's set this to two as well and let's play around let's reduce this intensity to seven and let's increase the intensity to two maybe and let's hit bake again so you can see that things are not working great you know what let's just disable ambient occlusion and hit generate lighting and see if that blackness goes away so this will be me playing around with a lot of values and trying to bake the scene again and again and again <laughs> what did i just do <laughs> and there we go i think i like what i'm seeing here i've changed the color of the walls to purple and the reason why I'm not giving you a direct solution is because if anybody is giving you a direct solution, they're simply lying to you because it would have taken them a lot of time. All right. I want to be honest with you because lighting, especially an interior scene will take a lot of time, not just to bake the lighting, but also to, you know, play around and then find a good balance between what you think is good and what is actually good. I don't think this is great, but for me, it works. All right. This is already a hundred times better than my previous games combined. Let's move on to the next step, which is to add light probes. So let's right click light, light probe group. We can just move it upwards. And what this does is it captures light information from our baked lights and passes it on to the dynamic objects inside the space. So for example, the player, if the player moves into the space, this light probe just calculates all of the light that passes through the space and then adds it to the player. All right. So this is how we optimize things when it comes to the baked lighting workflow. So let's edit these light probe positions. I'm going to select them and I'm going to move these light probes to fill the entire room. Okay. Once we filled it, we're going to then hit control D to duplicate sort of create subdivisions within these rooms. And there are lights here. So we're going to duplicate this kind of place it over here, duplicate that and then duplicate this a couple of times here. The most important thing is the important thing is to let it breathe. All right. Let's just hit generate lighting to test if the light probe works. So if we create the player, with a very highly smooth material. And if we move this player closer to the window, you can see the sides getting brighter. And if we move it farther away from the window, it's getting a bit darker. And there are no real time lights. Everything is baked. And because we are using light probes, if we move this dynamic object, you can see that this object is capturing light information based of these probes here. And this is a very great optimization. I'm going to disable this player and the next step is to actually create a reflection probe. We're going to right click light reflection probe and this is automatically going to make a big change in your scene and reflection probes are easy. Just edit the box to fill this room. Now what this does is if we hit bake, this is simply going to basically add reflection to all the reflective materials. For example, if we enable the player and just make it completely smooth you can see reflections. If you don't use reflection probe, you can see the difference, right? Reflection probes are really, really great. And it also adds a little bit of depth to the scene. So let's just delete this capsule, go back to lighting and generate lighting. And after using reflection probe, we somehow got this lighting back, which is cool, right? Next, we're going to add post processing and we're going to make it 10 times better. Let's add a game object. 
let's call this volume in the scene we're going to add a volume let's set this to global and we can choose a profile so we go to the settings right click and then create a volume profile let's call this volume p p and then we can drag and drop this profile here and we can add overrides so post processing the first thing always when it comes to urp is to add tone mapping let's click on mode and choose aces let's set the priority to one and you can see that tone mapping does not have any effect on our scene this is because we need to tell the main camera to actually have post processing in it so if you go to rendering we need to enable post processing all right and right off the bat you can see the effect that it has the second thing that we need after tone mapping is actually lift gamma gain and let's enable all three of these and just play around with these values and i just recommend just subtle changes here and there with the color and then play around with the sliders at the top and you can see the difference that it makes next we're going to add white balance we're going to play around oh i like this the fact that this gives this gives a little bit more warmth let's add another one and it's going to be shadows mid tones and highlights let's reduce the shadows a little bit because i want that ambient occlusion to fade away and i'm going to choose the color opposite to purple i'll bump up the mid tones which is sort of like here just to create the shot and obviously the highlights could also be bumped up as well and i'm going to move the highlights to a little bit actually a lot towards the red you're going to add another post processing effect it's going to be bloom and just increase the intensity of the bloom and you can see it really adds a difference to the scene so i'm going to keep it really subtle i'm going to increase scatter and look at that just look at this this makes a world of a difference and then finally we're going to add color adjustments and i'm going to decrease the exposure a little bit and then just a tiny tiny hue shift maybe even bump up the contrast a little bit yeah somewhat like that looks cool and then one more let's experiment with depth of field and let's set this to gaussian and this creates a subtle blur let's set this to 8.5 now just look at that look at how much we have transformed our scene here and we have successfully sort of created a good looking scene here and i'm proud of what i've done <laughs> to be honest i did not expect this to work and that's it we have a very well lit scene now we can add even more lights and then bake lighting again and this is with 40 resolution and 2048 light map size all right so just keep that in mind you can obviously go with the project settings and improve the quality settings of your project to get more quality out of it but i really like what i'm seeing here this does look a lot like it's indie but at the same time it looks really good and anybody can do this right <laughs> So let me know if you have any doubts when it comes to using URP in your project and uh, let me know how the video went. This was a complete experiment. I did not know that I could pull this off at the very least to this quality. This is a win in my book. <laughs> and this took two hours. I'm not going to lie to you and uh, give you a solution. All right. I want you to know that actually lighting a scene takes a lot of effort. Then this is just a simple basic scene. If you are having an indoor game, it's going to take a lot more out of you. I recommend spending a couple of days at the very least just on lighting your game so that it looks good. And this is how we do it. And just for fun, I'm going to increase the light map resolution to 100, maybe light map size to 40, 98. And let's see how it looks. And this is the result with much higher lighting settings and this in my opinion is overkill for the art style it is 42 megabytes so i think we can get away with it for this shot but for an actual game it's going to be much bigger we're going to have a lot of meshes so it's going to not be worth it at least in my opinion unless you're going for photorealism and there we have it that's how you light an indoor scene in unity i hope this video was useful if you're having any doubts when it comes to urp please let me know in the comments below and yeah i'll see you in the next video take care see ya bye bye Ooh, i need some sleep